Adam Schobel has me in purple horny toad hater mode. We have some Cowboys on some award watch list, though, and some newcomers to pay attention to because, of course, we're going to have a freshman ready to play. You are Locked On Oklahoma State, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma State Cowboys, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, y'all, and hello, all. Welcome back to Locked On Oklahoma State, your daily stop for all things cowboy and cowgirl related. My name is Cody Stovall. I want to thank you kindly for stopping by to make this your first listen. We're available on all of your podcasting platforms, visually as well on YouTube, Find me personally on X at All Day O State. Today, we partially brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment matter more right now. As playoffs wind down and the summer months heat up, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. There's something in this for everyone every day all summer long. Make sure you visit FanDuel.com to get started today. Meanwhile, we get started with your first listen of the day, talking about the Cowboys. Pistols Firing put out something that I thought was pretty interesting in regards to some of the storylines or some of the things to pay attention to entering the season. I thought it was a good idea, so I wanted to expound upon that a little bit, but they briefly covered something like hitting the ground running as it pertains to this year's schedule as opposed to last year's schedule. Of course, everyone's going to mention South Alabama as they should because that was kind of the wake-up point for the season. Um, Another one of the big things they had mentioned is who's going to play in the transfer market could it be gavin freeman from ou could it be trent howland making a big impact coming over from indiana we've talked a lot about trent howland i think that we're going to be fine especially in the fourth and one red zone situation and it'll do a lot to give sessie Velahe time to get going as far as freshmen are concerned of course there's going to be a freshman playing this season I think all of us could point right now to Josh Ford. I like Quentin Stewart, and I think everybody's extremely excited about the 6'7", 245-pound Tyler Foster coming over from Ohio. But Josh Ford has been somebody that's been making a name for himself since day one, very early on, as an early enrollee in the spring. Coming from you know a Gundy kind of tree in Stillwater that he's watched growing up, This is a big deal. Now, for me, to expound a little bit more on this, the biggest storylines for me on top of these would, number one, be healthy. We've been incredibly blessed thus far, and that's partially due to not being near as aggressive in practices so far this season in preparation, especially compared to last year. But last year, we were an all-out, full speed, no rest for the wicked banged up because it was going to take everything we had plus some to dig out of that very early two and two hole. That was after losing seven of the last eight in the previous year. We had to do something major to have any shot at making it to Arlington. And that happened. Thanks to Mike Gundy, the full contact, full speed, 24 seven was the ticket that was necessary to get us where we needed to go. And Mike Gundy, alongside the staff, knew it last year. Well, you would assume this year you don't need to do all of that, not with like 35 some odd seniors and 15 registered juniors returning. You better not have to go full speed thumping into the wall 24-7. If that was the ticket last season, you would assume that the seniority this season would allow that to not have to be the same approach. Depth isn't seemingly a big problem. So let's all pray that we roll into the season without having to rush the depth too hard too early. Like, I love having a QB1A and QB1B situation, just like I love having Nick Martin and Colin Oliver, two of the best linebackers in America, right next to each other. But let's get to Utah and beyond before we start talking about the need for the depth to really need to kick in. Another thing, number two on the list that I think we should be paying attention to is definitely the newcomers on the list. We, we, we also mentioned, just like the article, somebody that could you know emerge is a Trent Howland. I think with Ollie Gordon not having to serve any style of suspension, I'm gonna, I am going to st- 
steal Daywan Lofton only because what we've been seeing and hearing for, from him in such an early uh, amount of time, taking those Arlen Bruce style packages and, and make them applicable immediately. So that way we don't have to scrap anything, nor do we really have to change anything because the terminology in the lineups are going to be the same. This dude keeps getting brought up. Therefore, it's going to be very hard to keep him off the field, even though he just so happens to be in a spot that I think we have um, a lot of faith in Brendan Presley. But the sport of football, as we mentioned, being healthy, number one, you're always one injury away from needing a guy more than you thought physically possible. On the other side of the ball, of course, the cheat would be for me to say Obi is Egbo. The six foot two, 245 pound defensive end coming over from Gannon that has the ability to play linebacker and the speed to suit. I'm going to say Kobe Hilton. Y'all know I'm still on the big time Trey Rucker train. All right. But Trey's had some lingering injuries that have allowed someone like a Kobe Hilton more than enough time and ample opportunity to prove that he's got more than maybe somebody like a Trey Rucker if he's not rocking and rolling at full cylinders. And of course, the more reps you get, the more time that you have to understand the verbiage and the communication and the pass-offs in this system, the year two Brian Nardo system could use somebody like this because we saw what Trey Rucker was able to do very early on before he kind of figured out all of the terminology. Number three for me, and this is the big one, so really it's number one, is Mike Gundy. And Casey Dunn going to be more aggressive? Primarily, I'm, I'm looking to, to Casey Dunn here. I think Mike Gundy did more than enough to prove to all of us last season that he had plenty left in the tank and he found a new love for the game in doing so. The question this year is going to be for me on Casey Dunn. You know everybody in the country is going to put 11 to 8 men in the box to try to stop Ollie Gordon. As you should, he's the best running back in America. But if that's the case, then we know that we should maybe open it up a little bit more. Well, defenses obviously are going to know that as well. So if they're able to make you one-dimensional and then you fall into that, that next dimension of not being successful in the passing game, then we're in a world of hurt. So we have to be a little bit more innovative, a little bit more creative. We can't run the basic, you know, run-of-the-mill Casey Dunn offense to get what we need to out of this season. This is the season of capitalization. I think Mike Gunny knows that. We talked about, obviously, Greg Richmond, and we, we brought in Paul Randolph. I think this is yet a season where Mike Gunny proves it again. It's not time to get too cute or too conservative. I mean, I might fold my TV in half like an accordion on a live stream if we get a little bit too cutesy this season. You don't have to be overly... Um, I don't know, overly crazy, right? But let's not be overly docile either. Let's carry a big stick this year. I think Mike Gundy knows how crucial this season is for a multitude of reasons. So I don't see that being a, a big obstacle. Just like I don't see, you know, being on more watch lists throughout the course of the season being an obstacle, but it's nice to get it started. We've got it started. We'll talk about that in a second. For you to get your pocketbook started, you got to go download FanDuel. And you, I love sports. You love sports. We could watch sports and participate and talk about sports every single day. But when the sports aren't sporting like they always are in football season, FanDuel finds ways to keep giving you what you need, which is capitalization moments all you have to do is open the app and dream up the bets that you need whatever your mood depends and this summer FanDuel's hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily that's right there's something in this for everyone every day all summer long so make sure that you head on over to FanDuel.com and start making the most out of your summer FanDuel is the official sports betting partner of major league baseball Make sure you go bet on the Cowboys, too. We, we've talked about the over-under being at 7.5, which is an absolute travesty and a crime. We've also noticed that uh, some of the odds for Oklahoma State winning the Big 12 may be creeping up. So get in while the getting is good by going to FanDuel today. The Cowboys have several dudes that we expect to have huge seasons. 
Many of those guys, thankfully, have made the watch list because you can't be winning a bunch of awards if you don't even end up on the watch list, much like it's very difficult to end up at a Shrine Bowl or Senior Bowl or something to that effect if you don't start the season somewhat on these lists. So we know that Ollie Gordon is on the Maxwell Award list for the best player in the country. By and large, it's usually a quarterback that you could throw in here as well on top of Ollie Gordon. No love for Alan Bowman or Garrett Rangel in that department, even though we know, I know you know, QB1A1B. But we do have several Cowboys joining Ollie Gordon alongside him being listed at, as the Maxwell Award preseason watch list. We've got several more Cowboys joining them, including a couple on the defensive side of the ball, Oklahoma State. Linebacker Nick Martin with his 140 tackles and league-leading tackles for loss and sacks is coming into this season. Obviously, very anticipatory for what he can do as he makes the next jump to getting prepared for the NFL. We know that size for him coming out of high school is a little bit of a question. I don't think that that is a question any longer. Just like Malcolm Rodriguez was able to prove that his size wasn't an issue when a Whenever he got to the NFL, Nick Martin is doing much of the same, so this is not a big surprise here. Nor is it a big surprise that right next to him at the linebacker spot is Colin Oliver. Maybe not physically, but more figuratively, because Colin's going to be playing a little bit further out on the edge as well as putting his hand in the dirt and being part of that four-man front a little bit more. But they're all both named to the Nagurski Trophy watch list. Can Colin Oliver follow up his freshman All-American season with adding another uh, accolade to his, his resume of this upcoming season? This award is always given to the best defensive player in college football. It is good to know that we've got a couple Cowboys representative right here. Oklahoma State was one of only 15 teams to have multiple players on the Nagurski list which currently runs 75 players deep for the preseason. Will his, um, you know, 130 tackles and 22 and a half sacks be upgraded this season? If Colin Oliver can get his hand in the dirt a little bit more, as well as now knowing what to do on the outside, up the seams, on the back, backside flats for the tight ends, be absolutely crazy for him. Joe Maholski, the man in the middle with all of the, the starts, but not only that, the communicational piece up front. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of systems that the center isn't as much of a necessity. The center may not be one of the biggest focal pieces for the quarterback and communication and passing on the information to who's going to be the blitzer or who's the mic or is there going to be a shift or how to pay attention to a twist or a stunt? You've got to have a guy up front to coordinate all of it. We have that in Joe Maholski. It is obviously beneficial that he has another veteran that's been through multiple systems and Alan Bowman right behind him. But it's good to see him getting on this list because PFF has already graded him out one of the top centers in America. So this makes sense. The other one on the list that I'm very, very happy to see is Dalton Cooper. You all know how much I've ranted and raved about Dalton Cooper whenever he came over with his 1,600 and whatever, uh, 1,368 snaps without giving up a sack before he came to Oklahoma State. We were able to see last season why. And now Maholski was able to lead all power fives with over 1,035 snaps just last season. He didn't allow a sack and gave up just two quarterback hits. So statistically, this makes sense. Dalton Cooper, to me, has the biggest upside and the biggest I'm going to be in the NFL pretty daggone quick side right here, right now. So those are some of the Cowboys that are in the, on the watch list. As we'd mentioned earlier, sometimes you got to be early in on the process here to give yourself an opportunity. Leon Johnson didn't end up on a lot of the preseason style of lists. Therefore, it did make it a little bit more difficult for him when it came to the end, end of the season to get him 
the ability to kind of be showcased. Now, he was still able to catapult that into being picked up by the Los Angeles Chargers. We expect him to have a fun season. Just like we expect all of these Cowboys that are on these watch lists to take this thing up another level. By the end of the year, Trent Hallen could find himself in an Elijah Collins style of situation. Elijah Collins is currently trying his hand at the NFL even after having a season kind of cut short, right? Leon's was a little bit flipped. So who else could potentially jump up on this, you know, potential uh, watch list by the end of the season? You let me know down in the comments section about some Cowboys that maybe should have been on a preseason watch list that were left off. Justin Kirkland's a possibility. Him next to Colin Clay this year is almost going to be like a cheat code. If Aiden Kelly has what we think he has in the developmental game, if he's comfortable in the 315, 320-pound body, and he can now utilize his strength, this could be a, this could be a wild ride for a lot of us. Should Corey Black be on an award watch list? We know that the ticky-tack stuff over the years has been something he's kind of gotten away with. Is that coming to an end now? Is this some of the timing that we're seeing here for Corey Black? Maybe he should be on some of these watch lists. Kendall Daniels. Kendall Daniels not being on a, an award watch list is almost criminal. But this is a prove-it season for Kendall Daniels, as we mentioned you know, previously uh, it, last week or so. Because of so many factors, one of the biggest is of us having the success that we think we can it's going to be very, very contingent upon what he's able to do. We've got a, we've got a quarterback situation, if you want to call it that. I mean, it, it can be. It should be. But you don't need to run into situations in life. Being prepared is pretty important. So why not be prepared with your meals, too, when you're out there on the road trying to live life on the go? Sometimes eating healthy or eating right in general is difficult. Ibotta has you covered. It doesn't matter if you're out here spending dollar dollar bills on vacations and cruises and and summer baseball tournaments or you're just simply getting prepared for back to school. Ibotta has what you got to get your hands on. Ibotta is the free app that lets you earn cash back every time you shop. Earn on hundreds of items from groceries to beauty slot supplies, even toys. So you can make sure that you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. You can save over 2,400 brands, dollar, dollar bills in your pocket. And you can shop with over a thousand retailers, including your favorite grocery stores, Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy, and more. Right now, you need to get squared away with Ibotta. They're offering our listeners $5 just for trying Ibotta and using the code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE, all one word, when you register. Make sure that you go to the App Store or Google Play Store to download the free app, Ibotta, to start earning cash back and use the code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE. That is Ibotta. In the Google Play or App Store, use a code locked on college I B O T T A. You gotta get a lot out of butter. I just made that song up, probably made no sense. Uh, but another thing you gotta pay attention to is factor, ladies and gentlemen. No prep, no mess, the meals on the go. It's the best in the game, and it's the best for you. Every time that you're ready to roll out the door, whether you're looking for calorie smart, protein plus, or keto style, factor fresh, never frozen meals, are the dietitian improved and ready to eat in just two minutes meal that uh, you've been waiting all your life for. Make today the day that you kickstart a new, like what are we all waiting for here with 35 different meals and over 60 add-ons to choose from every single week. You'll always have new flavors to explore. Treat yourself to restaurant-quality meals that feature premium ingredients like filet mignon, shrimp, and blackened salmon. Head on over to factormeals.com slash lockedoncollege50 and use that code lockedoncollege50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month. That code is lockedoncollege50, all one word at factor. 
factormeals.com slash locked on college 50. Use that to get your 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month while your subscription is active. Make sure you get with this factor meals and I bought by the end of the day. You gotta get hooked up with Ibotta. That has so many lines just built in. What the Oklahoma State Cowboys currently no longer have built in is a quarterback for the 2025 class. Adam Schobel has decommitted to uh, join the family over at TCU. And it, it just hurts my heart. As I had a lot of faith on Adam Schobel joining John Schobel as a cowboy. Or uh, John Schobel joining Adam Schobel as a cowboy. But The other, the other, Adam Schobel decommitted to go be a purple horny toad with his cousin, John Schobel, who I had said previously, I thought John Schobel was the best get. It, of course, this stings, this hurts. I'm not going to sit here and pretend otherwise. This was not only a big get for the 2025 class, but if you look at the numerical uh, association, it was a huge deal. The galvanization of that position can be pretty important. Thankfully, we have Jalen Beckley. Thankfully, we have Michael Riles as well to kind of help with the galvanization of keeping this class. This is really not all that bad news, though, in the grand scheme of things. Because we don't really even need another quarterback. Now, in the transfer market era, and you know, you're always one injury away from this being problematic. Of course, you want to get a quarterback every single year, and undoubtedly, I'm sure that we will, because that's kind of, you know, been etched in stone for a long time. Is you got to get a quarterback every single class, and due to graduation, due to transfer, it, it doesn't matter how stacked you are. You're really only one catastrophic sequence from your quarterback room being a completely different spot. And unfortunately, we've all seen football. Sometimes it is the guy who's fourth string that is a necessity. So I'm not going to sit here and pretend that, again, the Adam Schobel DU doesn't hurt. I think more than anything, it hurts with that packaging. If you don't have Adam, you have no shot at getting John, right? Basically, now that they had John, they got Adam. Maybe gets an easy, but but it's a possibility, right? Garen Gell returned for a multitude of reasons. One of those being the fact that he knows he's good enough to be the guy and do the daggone thing here is the shiny crazy looking muscle car of a toy that everybody cannot wait to see used. Mayalake Smith is the most gunslinger polished ready of the bunch. And then we've heard nothing but phenomenal things about Garrett Wilson, which is why I'm not super concerned here. Yeah, he's a walk on, but just like we're hearing a lot about they want Lofton. The other guy we're hearing a lot about that's very surprising is Garrett Wilson. So we have an, an additional quarterback that isn't your run of the mill, right? He's over six foot two, 200 pounds, dual threat guy who has almost a thousand yards rushing uh, in his actual career. So it's not as bad as some may present it to be. It does suck. It sucks for the number. But a in Cleveland, galvanization guy of this class, alongside somebody like a Michael Riles. Nor does it change the fact that we are loaded at quarterback as it sits right now. Tim Rattay is still the dude that whispered everybody back this season. Should he not be the whisperer that can bring everybody back again next season? I believe so. But I also believe that we will take a quarterback, even if it's a walk-on style of guy, because you always want to bring one in pretty much every single year even if you're as stacked as we currently already are. It's a good problem to have. But it can still be a problem. 
Any who you guys definitely never are a problem. I appreciate you. As always, God bless. Go Pokes and thank them here in Locked On, Oklahoma State. I appreciate this being your first listen. For your second listen, go check out Locked On Horn Frogs. I'm sure that. Uh, let's go, Pokes. Thank you for tuning in. You know I love you. You could. Be I give you don't. That's okay. Two more importantly, share, comment, and subscribe. My podcast and folks out there, the bricks, the butter, the foundation, the bread, the the putty, the paste, the all of it. Do what you do. Hit the stars. Leave a review. All right, he all later, Tatters.